It's Jason here. Welcome to Founder of the Day Trivia, live on Friday nights. We're a few minutes behind schedule today. Uh, I was trying something new for trivia, but uh, I ran into some problems and it slowed me down. But I assure you we'll be ready for next week. Uh, we're going to have kind of a new format. Already a few new things going on this week, uh, as you will see. I will also note uh, one of the cards that I use... Um, does not have my favorite uh one of the cards i use has multiple questions and it's i don't love the questions on it so maybe it's not gonna be the best trivia night in the world but we are gonna go through james madison's uh friends and family and we are also gonna do our big wrap up at the end and people usually tune in late for that it's one of the reasons i kind of pushed it back a little bit though i meant to go up 10 minutes ago uh if you're here let me know uh, until at least one person lets me know we're here, I'm going to politic for a minute and distract you. Not actual politics, of course. Just distract you uh, until someone's ready to play. I need at least one person playing. Uh, people are rolling in a little bit slower tonight than usual. I thought that going on later would mean people would roll in quicker. Because usually you guys like to come in a little bit late. Um, someone else just popped in. Let me know you're here so we can get started. We are just about to start. Just waiting for people to let me know they're here. Uh, before we start asking questions, because I'm not going to ask you any questions if you're not here to answer them. Uh, I know some people like to just watch and listen. For those people who are here, but just watching and listening, well, I'm stalling. And you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, we got a bunch of questions. Uh, as I was saying, uh, someone's here. Sarcastic. Sarcastic is here for trivia. Well, welcome to the team. Feel free to be as sarcastic as you want. No one else rolling in yet. I'm a little bit late this afternoon, uh, but... Better late than never. I figured people usually pop in late. That's why I pushed it off a little bit. Uh, as I was saying, I, I've made a few adjustments. I, I have not finished them. Troy, Troy is here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome, Troy. It is Friday. I'm very excited. Uh, I'm thinking about moving these kind of permanently on Friday till 9, uh, I'm sorry, till 8.30 as opposed to 8.15. Although, Troy, I know you have to go to dinner sometimes. Actually, I thought doing it later might mean you could come at least for the second half instead of the first, which seemed to be more popular. Uh, I am planning on making kind of a revision. Uh, I started doing it tonight, but I ran out of time, uh, where instead of using the website, which we're going to use again tonight, to name all the names at the end, uh, I'm thinking about just putting them in, you know, all the signs of the Declaration, sign of the Constitution, this and that, uh, and checking them off as we go, and seeing if we can what we can get through that way. I think it might be a good change of pace for a while, and a lot of fun. Uh, and it'll help us learn a, bit, a little bit more, because instead of just listing random names, it'll be a little more challenging to list particular names for particular places and such. But since you guys are here, why don't we get going? Trivia. You'll notice right away I have a little bit different setup, uh, which we're working on. One of the things I'm working on. So, as you see before you, there is a query. What happened in Yorktown, Virginia on October 19th, 1781? And as you guys are telling me what happened on the 19th, I'm going to correct the dates. <laughs> um, whoopsie daisy. Uh, thank you for like, whoever hit like. There it is. What happened in Yorktown, Virginia on October 19th, 1781? Ashley's here. Hi, Ashley. Welcome to the party. Just in time. Question number one. We started a little late today. I do apologize for that. Uh, I am thinking about starting these at 8.30, but uh, let me know. Uh, as I was saying... There was some stuff to do. Ashley coming in and with an answer right off the bat. Uh, we'll give a second, see if anyone else got an answer. Uh, I'm about two seconds ahead of you, though I know sometimes the internet gets to you a little bit slower than it comes from me. And Ashley, whammy. Uh, General Cornwallis, Lord Cornwallis surrenders at Yorktown. Troy coming through. Okay, everyone coming through right as I let it go. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the official surrender is sent over. Now, technically, Cornwallis didn't surrender. He gave his sword to one of his lieutenants who went out and surrendered on his behalf because Cornwallis was just too sick to show his face. <laughs> uh, which is actually why George Washington did not accept the sword of surrender. Benjamin Lincoln did. Uh, if one of your lieutenants is going to surrender the army, one of my lieutenants is going to accept your pitiful British army. <laughs> All right, let's follow up another question here. Uh, why did many Native American nations fight with the British during the Revolutionary War? Uh, you'll probably stutter right away because there are several correct answers to this question. Uh, but there is one kind of overarching theme, which I think most of us could, many of us will be able to grab onto. 
while we're doing that, like I said, I'm gonna, I, I was trying to input a whole bunch of stuff. It took a lot longer to type in all those names than I thought, so we're not doing it this week, but I, I've been using, at the end of each, each section of questions each week, I've been asking, you know, who, who are the signers of the declaration from New York, or who signed the articles from Virginia? Uh, I'm trying to make a master list within my program here so we can just do it right here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to put a timer up probably below me for each one. And then we can be like, okay, 20 minutes, can we get through all of them? You know, and eventually we'll get to people like the signers of the, um, or delegates of the first House of Representatives from states, first Congress. We can add on like George Washington's cabinet, generals, like literally whatever we want. So I'm going to, we'll build it slowly over time. Everyone's coming in with answers. Troy, British promised to halt Western expansion in their lands. Actually, the British problem to keep colonists from moving to their lands. Uh, sarcastic, also something with trade, right? Like protecting certain trade interests. Okay, so you're all pretty much right. Like I said, there's a bunch of right answers. Uh, the, the answer that the card gave, which makes a lot of sense, um, they were hostile to the colonists. The colonists had been encroaching on their lands. Look at that. You guys were all right. The reason they were hostile is the colonists kept encroaching on their lands. And they just didn't want that anymore. And they saw the British, and I, I don't want to give away a future question that I know is coming, but they saw the British as more likely to protect their rights, especially you have people like Sir uh, uh, William uh, Johnston in, in upstate New York, for example, was clearly more, although he passes away just before the war starts, he's clearly more on their side than someone like George Washington who wants that land. So good job, guys. All right, question number the third, one, two, third. Most American colonists fought for which country during the Seven Years' War? Now, I'm not even going to show you the front of this card because I realized, uh, whoop, I'm going to drop it. I, I realized that these questions on this particular card, I made a mistake. And I will tell you after we go through some of these questions exactly what I did wrong, when I found out, and what happened. Uh, Troy, you are right. Not all of them fought with the British. Absolutely. Uh, the Oneida and Tuscarora were part of the... Um, uh, uh, wow, can't get words out today. I want to say Onondaga Nation. That's wrong. I live in Onondaga County. Uh, they were part of the Iroquois Confederacy that broke off. Uh, you have the, I want to say, I can't, I, I always mispronounce the name and I'm embarrassed to do so. Uh, the Shanagunk, I believe is how it's pronounced, but I'm probably wrong. In Massachusetts, who, who fought on several occasions and, and many of them died in harsh circumstances. Uh, you guys are coming through. The answer is Britain. Absolutely. I guess England is fine, Troy. We know what you meant, though the British probably would have been uh, a little agitated <laughs> at you for saying that. Anyone from the UK right now is probably at, very agitated. Anyone outside England, <laughs> Scotland, Wales, they are not pumped that you said that. Uh, but yeah, uh, most colonists fought with them during the Seven Years' War. Um, although up in France, uh, up in French Canada, uh, they they were North American colonists, but there was a lot more sparsely populated up there. Let's do one more over here before we go over to play another game. Did the Seven Years' War occur before, during, or after the American Revolution, or probably more appropriately, the Revolutionary War? No, American Revolution. That's probably as appropriate as it gets. Right. When you guys are done typing, make sure you hit like. I can really use those likes. Get more people hanging out. Everyone's got it right. Before. Pretty easy. You know what? That one was too easy. Let's do one more. Uh, what country won the Seven Years' War? Who, who, who won? As I said, I, uh, after I was like type, you know, I take the questions from the cards. I should start making up my own probably. I had for a while, but it was a little bit difficult, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I hope and I, I intend to in the future. Uh, anyone popping in? There's Jeremy. Thank you for coming. Excellent. Uh, but they were broke as hell. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the American colonies made a lot of people broke. And yes, the answer is Britain. Um, yeah, seven years war. Okay, so before we do the other thing, we're going to go to this one next question. And this, then I'll tell you why I screwed everything up when I started this thing. What was the Seven Years War called in North America? What did we over here call the Seven Years War? And I believe it's pronounced Seven Years is War. I've heard people pronounce it Seven Years is War. Um, I know it's spelled that way. 
although I think it's just seven years and the apostrophe indicates it's plural. Uh, French and Indian War. Yes, everyone's coming through. It's the French and Indian War. Here's the problem. The name of this card is French and Indian War, and I started typing in the first few questions, and I was like, well, seven years is war. Maybe it's a little trickier for everyone, and it's shorter. It's easier for me to actually fit on the screen next to me. And then I got to this question, and I was, and the question actually was, what was the French and Indian War called in Europe? And I went, ah, I can't go back. I'm already behind schedule. So I apologize for being deceitful. But, you know, it's a game full of tricks. Uh, we're going to pop over here, and my face is going to adjust strangely. I apologize for that. I'm going to fix myself as best I can. And we are going to play a game. As you can see before you, the screen is a little smaller than normal because I was setting up this new thing. And, uh, I, well, I ran out of time. Uh, this is where I started doing, uh, in case you guys missed it, I know Ashley's been there. Uh, oh, and this slows down my feet a lot, of course. Of course, I've been having trouble all week with my condition, and now I'm slowing down. Um, Ashley knows that I've been doing some read-alongs, which I hope to be doing uh, uh, more frequently, that I, I think are going to be a lot of fun. So if you guys are interested in that, watch me. I'm doing them live, uh, and they are fun. Uh, that being said, I this is the new screen I used for that, and that's why I'm having trouble fitting everything else on this new screen. I was like, this will be cool, and it's troublesome. <laughs> um, yes, Troy. I mean, yes, sarcastic. Troy is obviously being silly. It is certainly the seven years is war. So what we're about to do right now is name the key politicians and notable figures during James Madison's presidency. Yeah, well, uh, Galloway, what I need to do is is like I need to... I use Wi-Fi from downstairs in my house, so I need to actually like drill holes and run a wire. But I just got so much to do, so much to study. Uh, we have five minutes to name these people. Now, as you'll see, uh, hopefully you guys can see fine. There are some of these have numbers here. That means there's more than one correct answer, and we only need one answer. Uh, everything from president for James Madison through secretaries of treasury, the cabinet, down to chief justices, uh, Supreme Court appointments. First Lady and First Family, a.k.a. the Adopted Stepson. Interesting. So, I'm going to hit, I'm about two seconds ahead of you guys, so I'm going to hit play quiz as soon as someone uh, gives me one of the answers. Uh, I suggest we start with the president. Uh, if any of you know who was president when James Madison was president. <laughs> okay, Galloway, that's tough autocorrect for you, buddy. <laughs> All right. There it is, Ashley, with the correct answer, James Madison was his own president. Uh, I'm connecting from a, very, a whole different country, and the internet's very bad. The video's playing it like, uh, well, I'm really sorry about that, sarcastic, but thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to need to get a better uh, everything. I'm hoping to invest in a better computer one of these days, but we'll see. Ashley with Clinton, one of his vice presidents, along with Elbridge Gary, who did not like the United States Constitution and walked out, as we learned yesterday. I guess Gary was two days ago. All right. Who's pro temper of the Senate? That's tough. Speaker of the House. Uh, that's right, Ashley. Dolly is going to be a correct answer. Oh, they want her. Oh, no. Dolly. Oh, I guess she spelled it with an E. Dolly. But I gave it to you. Um, Supreme Court. Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. This will be the same answer as last week because this guy was Chief Justice forever. Monroe is definitely something in there. Oh. Well, oh, let me type. Yep, that's two correct answers. Secretary of State and Secretary of War, although there were a handful. Marbury? No. So Marbury versus Madison was the person suing James Madison. But who is the justice overseeing that suit that gave the United States Supreme Court the right of judicial review uh, over the uh, legislature? One of the landmark cases in American history, probably one of the most famous. Uh, this guy was appointed by John Adams and was there through Andrew Jackson. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, that's it. That's Marshall. There it is, Ashley. Well played. Uh, oh, yep. How does Ashley know? Well, it's because she comes and plays every week, and we learn a lot of stuff here. That's how she knows sarcastic. Keep going back. Um, I, I, I'm under the impression she does a lot of research on her own, would be my guess. Um... Well, that's all right. It's easy to confuse. Marshall, Marbury. And plus, it's they were both involved with that really important case. Uh, do we know any 
wartime naval commanders of the War of 1812 or wartime commanding generals of the War of 1812. There are 10 of them. Uh, Jamie, welcome. Scott versus Sanford. Interesting. Also very important. Oh, what? Uh, oh, boy. What's happening here? Okay. My computer. Well, one of my programs wanted to update. It really threw me for a loop. Let's see. Okay. Oh, Troy Hamilton. Yeah. Paul Hamilton. Well played. Uh, Secretary of the Navy for uh, most of, a good portion of Madison. Pinckney is definitely going to be, if I can spell it right. No, Pinckney's not a correct answer. No, the, I guess the Pinckneys were out of the picture. They were Federalists. They were the ones running against James Madison for president. The Pinckney boys. Uh, Navy. Um, let's see. Uh, they are looking for commanding generals. And I did say a name earlier. A future president of the United States was a commanding general during the War of 1812. That's a pretty good hint. <laughs> That's a very good hint. And I already said the name when I was talking about John Marshall early, if that's any help. Uh, there it is, Ashley Jackson. Yeah. Always, it's hard to consider him a founder, but he's pretty close. Secretary of the Treasury, that one's tough. Uh, the guy who uh, we've spoken about, who was Jefferson's Secretary of the Treasury, overlaps into Madison. Uh, he was really important because he was the only Democratic Republican who could think... Uh, think at the same level when it comes to the treasury as alexander hamilton and some of alexander hamilton's buddies uh, uh i i've been a while since i brought up his name but he's very important he was actually from geneva uh came to western pennsylvania was involved with the whiskey rebellion uh although he denied that <laughs> uh and an inaugural member of the united states house of representatives not an inaugural member went to the second session but then was kicked out because people didn't think he was a citizen long enough. Or not. Does anyone know Dolly Madison's son's name? <laughs> Secretary to the President. Oh, Ambassador. Oh, Ambassadors for James Madison. Oh, that's a, oh, uh, future president. A son of a president who would also soon be president. That's right. John Payne. Oh. Uh okay okay so that one oh, okay so oh that's two answers got it got it very interesting uh Mc, oh mcfarland oh i'm out of time i'm out of time i think mcfarland is a right answer uh ashley yes i was hinting at john quincy adams he should definitely be here as a uh um where, where was it ambassador where are the ambassadors oh there's a lot of names uh john quincy adams yes he was ambassador to the United Kingdom. Um, and he actually went over and signed the Treaty of Ghent, which ended the War of 1812, as did Henry Clay and a few other people. Um, the person I was hinting at was Albert Gallatin for Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, he hung around for a few years. Uh, really, really, really super important person. Um, did someone say Barnum? No, you said McFarlane. That name sounds very familiar. And I can't figure out where it is. I don't know who Benjamin Williams Crown Shield is. The Secretary of the Navy. I like that name. Oh. Did we get Hamilton? Oh, yeah. We got Hamilton. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, I'm looking through. I want to see if McFarland's on here. No, I'm not seeing it, but I might be overlooking it. Galton also would have been counted as an ambassador, by the way. Um, it's interesting. John Payne Todd, I did not realize, was actually also a secretary to the president for a little bit there. And there's two Coles here. I wonder if they're brothers. Well, we got to look into that now, don't we? Uh, let's see. Things come in. Yeah, Adams was... Yeah, John Quincy Adams was really, really important. Uh, G.P. Todd was related to Mary Todd's family. Like Mary Todd Lincoln? Huh. I don't know of that. Um, I, I was really reading about Lincoln's ancestors recently because I like to find some presidents had relatives who fought in the Revolutionary War. Like... Polk had a grandfather, uh, and and uh, uh, Van Buren had relatives that fought in the Revolutionary War. So that is very interesting. Um, question: I don't know about that. I know that like Lincoln's grandfather, like Lincoln's dad, watched his dad get shot by a Native American. 
and like is I don't, I'm hoping to write an article about this because it's like I think just like before the Washington administration, uh, because because Lincoln's born I think in like 1802 or 1806, like Lincoln's born during Thomas Jefferson administration. So when his dad was a kid, they're like out in the yard working. He, his father, and two brothers, older brothers, and then all of a sudden the dad gets shot, and they look, and then one brother runs to town to get help. The other one runs right to the woods to get his weapon and and Lincoln's father is like looking down at his dad and the Native American runs up to grab Lincoln's dad and then but right before he gets there uh the other brother runs out and shoots at him so that's fun uh Link, yeah Link, yeah yeah I don't see McFarland on here I feel like I know the name but I can't place where but anyway back to the game thank you guys for coming thank you for hitting like if you do like what's happening uh this was our last question so don't worry too much about that let's go to our next question again playing from these cards these seven years war cards aka french and indian war cards most native americans fought for what country during the seven years war and this is a lot like a question we asked earlier but we've gone back in time. Like Huey Lewis and the news, we have gone back in time. Is it, does Huey Lewis sing the Back to the Future song? Is that? Man, I feel like I should definitely know that. Big answers coming through. Big answers, everyone's right. France. Most Native Americans fought with France during the Seven Years' War, AKA the French and Indian War, hence the French and Indian part. Uh, and then, they lost to the British because they really didn't like the the um, the Anglic the Anglo colonists, uh, and then the revolution breaks out fifteen years later, and then they're like, okay, we just fought the British, but we want to hang out with the British because we just don't like the colonists, and that didn't work out for them, unfortunately. Uh, who was the highest ranking American-born officer in the Seven Years' War? This is a fun question. Who was the highest ranking American born officer in the Seven Years War? I do feel like we've discussed this recently, but it's a, it's a, it's a tougher question than it seems. Or it's an easier question than it seems. Depending on who you are and what you think. Oh, by the way, oh, I just saw myself drinking. This is my new cup. My new cup. I, I came up with this Betsy Ross flag design. I like really like it. I know it's not the most special thing in the world, but I put one out there. I know Troy, you've got one on the way. You got uh, the shirt on the way. I think you got the fireman shirt, right? Yeah. I, I personally just really like it. The shirts are comfortable. The hoodies are super comfortable, but it's too hot to wear them. And uh, I guess we're getting all the answers we're gonna get. Stay Ashley and Troy. Everyone else just watching, waiting. Colonel George Washington. He was just a colonel at the time. Not that there's anything, now that I, sh I shouldn't say just a colonel. Obviously, that's a pretty high rank. Uh, but when you're looking at generals, uh, colonel's a surprisingly low rank. But when you're a colonist, you're not going to, you can't, you're not going to get up there. Um, go to Washington to Red Stripe. You got it. Uh, yeah, I just sent one of the blue stripes to my brother-in-law, actually. Uh, Braddock. Okay, uh, uh, Jamie, Braddock is a great answer, but Braddock wasn't, an American born officer. He was England born. Uh, I think England. He was Britain born. So that's why it's a little bit of a tricky question. But George Washington actually in the Seven Years War was already the highest ranking American. That's why when he shows up to the uh, Second Continental Congress, they need to put together an army and he's wearing his colonel outfit. You know, people say he wore the outfit assuming he'd be appointed commanding general. Uh, from my understanding, he wore the uh, his military uniform assuming he'd be given a pretty high command, probably a general of some kind, but I, I don't think he knew he'd be commanding general because there were more experienced generals available, but none of them were American born. And that's the trick. Uh, wouldn't he have to be younger than 45 ish? Uh, Galloway, who? Um, Washington during the French and Indian War? Yeah, he was like 20. George Washington started the French and Indian War, aka the Seven Years' War, kind of on accident, and he was like, 19 20 21 years old somewhere in there <laughs> yeah, he was a child like george washington was like 40 
five. He was born, I think, in 1732. I think. Uh, you guys can fact check me on that. I think it was seven thirty four. So like when the he's like forty five when he becomes general of the American army. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it was an accident. <laughs> um, the disaster at Fort Necessity certainly seems to have been an accident. Okay, we're going back to the regular what happened here questions. Uh, and this one's topical. I didn't even pick this one out on purpose. And I'm typing in. I'm like, oh, man, this is exactly today. Today, on this date, I'll do the calculation. What happened on Long Island, New York, uh, on August 27th, this day, is that like is 245 years ago? Nailed it. My neck cracked. What do you know? Uh, also, as someone from Long Island, and Ashley, back me up on this, uh, what happened on Long Island is the way to say it. Now, most people not from Long Island would have said in Long Island, but you can't be in an island. You're on it. Okay. Um, Battle of Long Island, Battle of Long Island, Tea Party, Battle of Long Island. Uh, not a Tea Party. Good, good guess, uh, Galloway, because there were Tea Parties around. But there was the British Invasion. The Battle of Long Island is what it's often referenced. Sometimes you'll hear it called the Battle of Brooklyn, because Brooklyn is technically on Long Island. <laughs> and uh, it goes by either name. That's right. See, Troy's got it. He knows my, my way around things. So, uh, August 27th, 1786. Uh, 1776. The British had left Boston... The British were besieged in Boston for a, almost a year. And then the previous March, 1776, they leave. They go to Halifax and they come down to New York where they meet with a gigantic British force of somewhere around 30 or 40,000 people. So the entire city's worth of Philadelphia, the biggest city in North America, if you took every person and sent them against New York, that's what, that's what the British did. They should have dominated. They were just so... How was just so lax and cavalier about the way he went things? Uh, that's why Washington was able to escape so many times. Uh, what a dummy. Yes, it's on Long Island. In Long Island sounds weird. Yes, it does, Ashley. Now, I don't live in Long Island. I haven't lived in Long Island about a decade, but... On Long Island. I just, now I'm saying in. I, I, it's because I've lived too far away, and now I'm losing it. I've lost my accent. I'm losing everything else. All right, you guys don't care about Long Island. Let's continue here. Does the Constitution permit the death penalty? Now, this is one of the Constitution questions. They're not necessarily about the American Revolution, but, you know, the Constitution barely came around about that time, so we talked about it. Does the Constitution permit the death penalty? Hey, no, 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 we're getting no's. No, 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 I moved too fast. Now I'm having an, oh, I gave it a encoding error. I moved too fast. Now, okay, well, now I'm learning why why we're having these problems. All right, we got some no's. We got Troy with a question. Uh, Ashley, I would assume so since we have it. Ashley, for the win, right there. Uh, yes, it, it does not not allow the death penalty. That's a double negative. Uh, yes, it doesn't explicitly say you can kill, you know, you can off prisoners in the Constitution, but it doesn't say you cannot. And in fact, many states have the death penalty. Now, as the card says, uh, there is clearly a debate. There always will be, as long as it's around, a debate on it, uh, because the, quote, cruel and unusual punishment part of what I, is the Fifth Amendment or the Sixth Amendment, uh, the, the, the right to not have cruel and unusual punishment. And many people would argue it's cruel and unusual. Nowadays, the argument seems to be more around uh, DNA. Now we can much, much, much better determine whether or not someone committed a crime because of the DNA evidence. But that's... The problem is that often has been proving people innocent years after they've been executed so it's tough uh yeah i know i'm a trickster so so that is all of the regular scheduled questions i have for us today
the one thing I have remaining is the big boy. Whammy. Now again, it is a little squeezed because I have put it on this particular platform. Uh, let me see if I can actually give us a little bit better. There we go. Now you will see advertisements. I used to have my head blocking these advertisements. <laughs> now I do not. Didn't consider that until I just saw it now. So those of you who know the game know the game. If you're new here, you might not. We're going to name just a ton of names. 243 names to be precise. Uh, yeah, we're doing the list right now. Uh, can you name the U.S. Founding Fathers who were pretty much anyone involved with the legislative branch, although not every Continental Congressman, something I plan to remedy when I kind of mimic this and do it in the future fashion I was telling you I hope to create. Can you name anyone who was either a first Continental Congress delegate, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, a signer of the Articles of Confederation, a delegate to the Constitutional Convention, or members of the first continental congress and people are already throwing it out oh troy man i'm sorry dude uh, we'll figure it out okay galloway's going so you guys can go i suggest naming the big six so you don't forget them that'd be real embarrassing but let's go with galloway hancock franklin yeah have fun troy take a bite for me howard no nope, no howard and oh hamill Pin, nope. Washington. Jefferson Adams. The skews the skewsami. The skewsami? Skewsami. Thank you for hanging out. John Adams is absolutely correct. Hamilton, we just got J. Monroe Grenville. That's nope, sorry. That's not one. Nice try, sorry, Gatsby. Madison. Uh Harrison, absolutely. Sherman, uh, no Kennedy, no Reagan. We're in the revolution. Grenville, no, Grenville was one of the British. He was over leading the British over there. So we're looking for Americans here. Sherman, sorry for the bias. That's just how the game is played. Melton, Walton, Dana, Page, Coles, Martin, Langworthy. Oh, actually, he's going for it. Went, word. Don't leave her hanging, guys. Help her out. There's plenty of you here. Thompson, absolutely. Uh, no P, though. Bloodward. Hillsborough. I do not believe that's one. Nice try, though. Wadsworth. Ellsworth, getting the worst done. Livingston. Uh, no E, but you're right, Jamie. Good play. There's a bunch of that. That's at least two right answers. Goldsboro. Pitt. Nice try. Uh, William Pitt. There was a Pitt around at the time. Randolph. Uh, uh, Baldwin, Huntington, Pendleton, Rutledge. Yes, that's probably two. Nailed it. Johnson, Johnston, Drayton. It's funny. You did, uh, you did, oh, Dalton and Walton. Okay. And then, yeah, Drayton and Dayton. That's usually how I do it. Uh, Lawrence. Lawrence, okay, Lawrence, and then it's Lawrence, it's spelled weird, it's like a, a yeah, it's not Lawrence, it's Lawrence, Warren, Warren, oh, very close, Warren should be a correct answer, but he never signed, he never worked in the federal level at any point, he never really left Massachusetts, and so that's just, that should be a correct answer, but it, it's not, because there is another name that finds its way onto this list that shouldn't also. Um, Houston, Houston, Hudson, Harnett, McKean, absolutely, Whipple, yeah, Sherman, did we do Sherman? Yeah, we just did it, that's okay, Hanson, Hancock, I think we did Hancock pretty early, Payne, Wayne, Chase, Dean, Reed, Henry, well played, Dyer, Baldwin, I think we just did Baldwin, but that's right, Van Dyke, uh, Dean, uh, we did Dean, there's an E at the end there, Mick, Mick Henry, right, we did Henry, you don't want to forget Mick Henry, Hall, well done Jeremy, DeHart, Hooper, Hopkins, Hart, regular Hart, yep, Ellery, 
Ellery. Uh, there's only two L's, <laughs> not the third one at the end there. Holton, huge. I only know that because I'm. I only know the spellings because I've done this for how many, like almost a year. <laughs> Lewis, uh, Smith. We did not do Smith. Gary, Elmer, Lee, Ames. Rocking through it. Someone's been practicing. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, Ash. On I don't know of a north. That's a good guess though. Mercer, Witherspoon, absolutely. Signer, Middleton. That's two. Gale, Benson, Doug Benson. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, he's a comedian. For those of you guys who don't know. Stockton, Leonard, Grout. We are one right up top. We need uh, when something tastes boring. Partridge, Rhodes, Gallery. Love those loyalists. Ross, <laughs> Grain. They're good to know. They're really important to the revolution. It's good to know. Wolcott, absolutely. Hutchinson. No, see, Hutchinson uh, was the royal governor. He was one of the Brits in Boston. So, uh, Hathorne, Thornton, Bartlett. Yes. Taylor, Tucker, uh, Goldsboro is right. I think we already did, though. Yeah, we already got that one. But that's definitely a good answer. Thatcher, Braxton, Tony Braxton. Lee, I think we just did Lee. That's okay, though. Greer, Lee, thanks for remembering. We just did have videos about him this week. Sylvester, Sil, let's spell it right. Sylvester, I got it. Uh, Gary, I think we did, yeah. Steel. Moore, Floyd, William Floyd, one of our Long Island guys, Smith, we just popped in, Stanton, did we do, nope, Lansing, yes, Sullivan, absolutely, we usually forget him till the end, too, so good job, all right, just five minutes in, only a quarter of the way there, Yates, Hartley, and about halfway through, so we're doing great, great, like roosted flakes, great, Heister, yes, Morton, Saltman, and Declaration sign up. Livermore, well played, guys. Just chugging along. Climber, I know what you're going for. Good, Hugh, Payne, we did. Clark, anyone popping in? We're just naming all the legislative members of the American founding that we possibly can. Carol, <clears throat> Climber, I think we just did, yep. Wisner, for sure. Henry Wisner from Upstate New York. Goshen, with, not white. Wilson. Johnson, we did. But that's okay. You don't have to worry if we said it already. Uh, uh, sarcastic. We. Uh, it's better to say it twice than not at all. Is kind of our rule here. So go ahead and type it in, even if you think we've done it already. Nelton, Humphreys. Though we're doing pretty good at not overlapping. Ross, I think we got. That's right. Button Gwinnett, absolutely. Smith, yep, got it. Sinclair. Should I give Michael Troy trouble for? Because he pronounced Sinclair and it's Saint Clair. Pretty, I, I feel like. It's a friendly gesture, though. Jennifer Matthews, one T. Hughes. Uh, we must have done already. Hall. I think we did Hall. Yep. Ooh, Rutledge. Anyone popping in? We're just naming all the legislative members of the American founding. Rutledge, uh, we must have done. Because that's two correct answers. Harrison. I think we did Harrison pretty early on. Witherspoon. I think we did. Yes. McKean. We did. Yep. That's all right, Rush. As soon as I said, we're not overlapping. There it goes, Ross. Rodney, we did not do. Middleton, we did. That's two of them. Chase, we did. Uh, so when we type in the last name, it covers all of them, Jamie. So when I typed in Lee, yes, it did Francis Lightfoot Lee. Uh, it also would have done Har Henry Lee, and it also would have done uh, Robert, uh, 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 not Robert E. Lee. Uh, Robert E. Lee is Henry Lee's son. Uh, anyone with the last name Lee, it would have popped up. Uh, Charles Lee, who's unrelated. Not Charles Lee. It's Charles Adams, I was thinking. Never mind. Hayward. Hooper, I think we did. Paco, which sounds wrong, but it's right. Williams and William's son. Whammy. Hop. Hop. Hopkins. I can spell it. Did we do Hopkins? Hopkins' son. Oh, we did Hopkins, not Hopkins' son. Mifflin. Hawkins, Skyler. I'm always surprised how long it takes this guy to say Skyler. He's so popular now. Well, his kids are King, 
Jay, I think we got. Griffin, I think we got. No, we didn't. Great. Low, another another loyalist for you, Galloway. <laughs> Winning the game. I love it. I'm just giving you trouble. Crane, what we did. Langdon. Gill, man. Oh, we're moving to New Hampshire. Gorham. Yes. Daniel Gorham. Few. Uh, Lynch. Just Lynch. There's that Lynch should be two correct answers, I think. Yes, because his father signed the Argo Associ uh, Association. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have to add the junior either. Oh, Morris is at least two. And my kid's name. I would have been real not happy if we didn't get that. Biddle. Gwinnett, we did. I'll type it anyway, just to make sure. Give me hope for loyalism. That's all right, man. It's fun. It's fun. They're really important because they were the first kind of Congress. Like, it, it really speaks to how people felt uh, at the time that even people who ended up being loyalists and would not leave Great Britain were still really unhappy with what was going on. Penn, Reed, and Reed. I guess we got one of the two. Elsa Borum, whose name I mispronounced in his video. Uh, Borum. Okay, so it's weird. It's B. It's B O E R U M. Bo Rum is how I remember it. Stone. Strong. Pinkney is probably two. Yup. Dyer. I guess we did Dyer. Ward. Nice. Maclay. Yes. Klingon. Uh, Burgoyne. Nope. Sorry. He's ball with the British. <laughs> we're, looking for the, we're looking for the home team. I like how your name is sarcastic, though. I like how you troll me just a little bit. It's fun. You don't overdo it. You do it just right. And I appreciate it. Huntington. Bed. Bedford. That's a Brit. Yeah. He got it. He got it. A gun. A Rodney. I think we did get Rodney. Wolcott? Did we? If I spell right, we'll see. Wolcott. Yeah, we did. Randolph. We did. Good name. Foster. Bland. There's that guy right up front. Mason, Caswell, Collins, Hosmer, I think, no, we didn't, Harvey, Friends of TJ, Davey, Tillman, Tillman's a good one, uh, Izzard, Ingersoll, Fitzsimmons, Tillman's kind of a loyalist, uh, Matthew Tillman was a leader of Maryland, and then his nephew, Tench Tillman, was uh a a a aide de camp to george washington who's the one who rode to philadelphia to say they won the battle at yorktown uh and Tench's dad aka matthew's brother was a loyalist i forget his first name i think it was john but i don't quote me on that uh pain i think we got patterson do we do no nope. dickinson oh how dare us forget don dickinson as long livingston we got the livingston's doer do we get there it is telfair Cynixon. Great name, man. Great name. Colonel. Oh, hey, dude. <laughs> there you are. Come in hot with Cynixon. Cushing. All I think we did. Let's see. Is Colonel going to pop in and lead us to victory now? Or did you miss too many and you're going to just name names we've already said? Ooh, Davy. Uh-oh. One for two, Colonel. The pressure's on. We're holding out for a hero here. <laughs> RV, yep, yep, that's the order I actually did it in. <laughs> oh, Kinsney, well played. Um, Marchand, Cadwallader, Cynixon. Nope. Uh oh. Now, now Colonel's going over. Born, good one. Van Rensselaer, thanks for spelling it right. Uh, Dickinson, I think we just got. Not a loyalist, despite what rumors you may have heard. <laughs> Uh, Collins, Herring, De Hart. I think we got that one. That's all right. Feel free to guess away, Misfit. Whatever you need. <laughs> Hughes. As well. Oh, <laughs> Troy, playing from your phone. All right, uh, Troy, well, I'll help you out. We need an article signer from Pennsylvania. Um, we need a bunch. We still need a good amount of people. Uh. Oh, oh, a patriot leader who shouldn't be on this list, Troy. That's you. Shouldn't actually be on the list because wasn't part of the thing. Rhodes, we got. Galloway's here naming all the loyalists for us. Uh, so King George III. Okay, well played. Cadwallader, we got. Uh, Rush, we got. Scudder, Dr. Dimebell. There it is, Curtis, uh, uh, Colonel Morton. 
Ross. Sorry, Troy. Phone's too slow. <laughs> uh, Ward. I think actually Galloway got Ward, if I'm not mistaken. All right. What else do we need over here? We need. Oh, President of the Continental Congress from Jersey. Oh, President of the Congress from Jersey. Gadsden's a good one. The Paul Revere of the South. Okay, Lovell. Well played. Oh, you're really playing from the rest right now. Walker, Parker, uh, McHenry. I think we got McHenry. Yep. Smith, we got Oliver. No. That's a good try. Wilton. No, that's a good guess, though. Goldsboro, we got. We tried him several times. He's in there. Uh, Clark. I think we got Clark. We're at that point where we're starting to overlap. Clinging. President of the Congress from New Jersey. That's a poor one. Blair. Well played. Oh, Secretary of the Constitutional Convention. This is a name that I gave a bunch of hints. It was a different person, uh, but still Sturgis. That R in there. Share his name with a future president. We were talking about it earlier. Hopkinson, I think we did. Yeah, I actually did the Hopkins Hopkinson ride. Um, who's over here? Congressman from Connecticut. Neck die cut. Oh, oh, the son of the royal governor of Connecticut through the revolution. Uh, Ashley Jackson, there it is. Conti, Sini, Showerman. Yeah, we did that one. That's good. Oh, Whipple. I think someone did Whipple. Yeah, someone new came in and did Whipple. It might have been Jamie. Welcome to the team, Jamie. Buddha, no, there it is, Colonel. Uh, that Buddha, no, was the president of Congress from Jersey that we were looking for. Uh, constitutional delegate from Delaware. Let's see. A win coop. I don't think we've done. Uh, Randolph. I think we did ran. Yeah, yeah. Randolph usually comes through. Oh, a constitutional convention delegate from North Carolina. We just did these guys yesterday. If you're, uh, if you're there, I don't remember. Oh, actually, if you're there, Muhlenberg is two. Good job. Stockton, do we do? Yeah, we did. Rich Stockton. Father-in-law, Benjamin Ross. Bassett. Whammy, there it is. Bedford. We did Gunning Bedford. Great name. Vining. Awesome. And there's Delaware. All done. All done. Okay, Sumter. Bassett. I think we literally just did. That's okay. Probably didn't come through by the time we typed it. Livermore. Got. Actually, with Uger. Good one. Bolton. Did we do that one? We did that one. Wow. McKean. I think we got. Scott, I don't remember doing. Okay, three and a half minutes. 13 more. Can we do it? Rhode Island's done. Georgia, we need a constitutional convention delegate from Georgia who did not sign the document. Pierce, there it is, Ashley. Literally, we spent the last two days doing a read-along, which, by the way, guys, something new I'm doing. I'm doing some live read-alongs, and uh, we were reading William Pierce's sketches of the other characters at the constitutional convention i'm glad i would have been really disappointed if we didn't get that actually <laughs> like really disappointed huntington black is not but white i think is as is brown and grayson technically yeah so not actually great sevier nice uh with i think we uh let's try it with we got burke harrell sedgwick Really important name to know. Blount. I think we do we get Blount. Yeah. Now there's one name I don't remember doing. I'm gonna check and see if it's here. Uh, from oh we did. Oh, uh, but we are missing one guy from the Constitutional Convention. Does not sign the document. Ellsworth. I think we got Ellsworth. Yep. Thornton. I think we did. Taylor, Barnett, Strong, uh-oh, two minutes left, we got six more, we need an article signer from Virginia, and a constitutional convention delegate from Virginia, Alexander is a good guess, no, William Alexander did not sign the document, he was at war, and he actually dies kind of early on. Scott, I think we did. Gary, we did. Bannister, nailed it. Crane. Can we do Crane? 
Langdon, I think we got. Uh, let's see, we need a constitutional convention delegate from Virginia and a congressman in the first congress from Virginia. Uh, Braxter, I think you're saying Braxton. Yes, McClurg is the delegate from Virginia. Well done. Your sister is right. Uh, sushi on the table. Okay, bye, Troy. Oh, sushi, I want some. Thatcher. Braxton, we just did. Uh, Thatcher. No, Brown. No, I think we got all the colors, the, the, the names that are colors. Article signer from Pennsylvania. We only need four more. We got one minute. Um, We need New York's done. Massachusetts is done. Jersey looks to be done. Uh, oh, congressman from Connecticut. Oh, oh, the royal, it's the name of the royal governor from Connecticut. The only royal governor who stayed and hung out with the Patriots. Blair. Kane, we did. Butler, we got. Oh, Robert Joe. There it is, Misfit. You are coming through. 20 seconds. Three more. Um, Cook. That's a good guess. Nope. Trumbull. There it is, Ashley. Whammy. We need two more. It looks like a Constitutional Convention delegate from North Carolina. Sign of the Constitution from North Carolina. Who signed the Constitution from North Carolina? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Out of time. Much like Doc Brown's license plate. Whammy. Two references. We missed two people, William Branch Giles, a uh, senator, a uh, congressman from Virginia in the first Congress, and Richard Dobbs Spate, signer of the Constitution from North Carolina. That is, it hurts especially when it's a signer of either the Constitution or the Declaration. Those are the two ones. Like I said, I've been putting it together. I mean, I mean, we got 99%. We did really well. We did really, really well. Uh, like I said, next week, I am hoping to... I'm not going to have this entire list done, but I am going to start uh, sectioning it out between, you know, signers and the declaration from this state, this state, this state. Uh, and hopefully, I'll set up a timer and I'll see how many we will, like... We do one or two, and then if we want to really go all out, we can see how many we can get through in order. Uh, and then that will be fun. So, uh, did we? I thought we did it. Like, no, did we miss by one last time? That that's heartbreaking. Uh, we, we, we we're usually right up there. I mean, this is nothing to be ashamed of. Like, we had two hundred forty-one people. <laughs> that's a pretty significant number of humans in general. Uh, two great job. Uh, I hope you guys had fun this week. I I did. I still plan on having more fun. But that's after the show's over. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually leaving town for a half day tomorrow. But I do hope at some point, maybe on Sunday, to do another read-along. Uh, there's a link in the description to the Discord channel where if you want to read along with us, I'm, I'm basically just taking a document, reading along. I'll give you a link to the document. We read through it. We have fun. We see what we can gain from it as a team. We see what we can learn about interpreting their old-timey language. Uh, we did, as I said, the last two days, we split it in half. William Pierce's, uh, the read-along thing. So, uh, Ashley seemed to really like it. Uh, I forget who else was there. Was it sarcastic? Someone else came for one of them. Uh, oh, it might have been TJ. Uh, basically just reading through documents from the American Revolution and seeing what we can learn from them. And it seems to be a lot of fun. I really like it. Uh, it's basically instead of just reading things by myself, I'm now reading them on camera and you guys can read along and see if you learn too. Uh, if you have any documents you'd like me to read or elaborate on or think everyone else might enjoy, let me know. We can do literally anything. Literally uh, correspondence, notes, uh, uh, actual documents. I was thinking about going through the uh, 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 Pennsylvania Farmer, which was John Dickinson's writing in the late 1760s, which uh, we, I think might be helpful. So... There's that. People are already signing out. So I'm going to sign out too. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, Ashley, you have a good weekend. Everyone have a good weekend. We're going to leave you with John Adams' place. Peace, field.